Arbitrum rains down free money from the heavens, blockchain gaming continues to make massive strides despite backlash, and the American government is here to ruin the party. Welcome back to the Crypto Gorilla YouTube channel. It's the end of the week where we cover the biggest news stories surrounding brands and VCs entering the space, blockchain games, and all things NFTs. If you enjoy this kind of content, would you kindly hit that like button? And as usual, I am not a financial advisor. So the most anticipated event of the week was definitely the Arbitrum airdrop. We saw some of the most moon boyish speculations on what the price is gonna hit. We finally have that number. Unless you managed to sell earlier when the price was higher, it has landed on $1.40. I'm gonna put a link Link in the description down below where you could check if you're eligible to claim some Arbitrum tokens. I personally had 1500 tokens, which is over one ETH for absolutely free. So it's definitely worth looking. And I understand for the non web three people watching this, this sounds too good to be true and it must be a scam. But the easiest way for me to explain this to you is imagine a brand new company launches and they launch an app and they say for the first 10,000 people who try out our app, we're going to give you shares of our company. Now what's in it for the company? Why would they do this? This, well, they get free users and they also get people who are going to help stress test their app and find vulnerabilities. So this is something that is very common in Web3 and you should definitely keep an eye out for some future ones, especially the most anticipated ones. Now, one that I spoke about a few months ago, as well as in my last video was ZK Sync. However, they have just dropped this tweet at the time of filming this. I do not know what it means. So I will be tuning into their Twitter space today at 11 a.m. Eastern to find out if the snapshot has already been taken and if if it has, I'm going to move on to other tokens such as Starknet and Scroll. The next bit of news comes out of Yuga Labs as they're going to be doing their second test flight into the other side on Saturday, March 25th at 12 p.m. Eastern. Now, this, of course, is to continue testing the engine they're using for their MMORPG in partnership with Improbable and their M Squared technology, which allows thousands of players to play on one server. The first trip was back in July where 4,500 people attended. And if you did attend and you owned a piece of land, you did receive the obelisk trait, which shows that you were there for the first trip, which roughly one fifth of the entire collection possesses. Now, although we do not have too much information on what it's going to be, the second trip will include a competition, as they do mention that when you drop in, you will be randomly assigned one of four teams, each team led by a captain. And these captains include Jimmy Wong, Bryson, Low Belly and Champ Medici. Next up, we had multiple announcements out of Magic Eden. The first being they launched their very own Bitcoin marketplace, making it the very first time we have an audited marketplace to trade ordinal NFTs. Now it did launch with over 70 collections available to trade, as well as its own dedicated Twitter profile. And they partnered with three different non-custodial wallets, which are Xverse, Hero, and Unisat. The second announcement was the launch of Magic Eden Games, which helped players discover and explore different Web3 games, including highlights and overviews, as well as a news feed powered by Pokestarter. In NFT news, Pudgy Penguins filed a new trademark application for the use of the Penguin head logo, which mentions its use on candy, cereal boxes, printed comic books, social network applications, and more. Now this comes at no surprise, Luca is extremely successful when it comes to his background with e-coms and his ability to scale brands. So for the Pudgy Penguins, Penguin Collection to continue heading in this direction to branch outside of Web3 and reach a mainstream audience is a no-brainer. In other news, we saw Sony file a patent for a cross-platform NFT transfer framework. Now, while I'm personally not a fan of patents, it's really good to see Sony continue to be interested in Web3 technology as they had previously filed a patent for NFT lending. And in my opinion, the adoption of NFTs and asset tokenization by companies across many industries is inevitable. Now, the patent itself outlines how NFTs could be used to transfer between different devices such as VR headsets, smartphones, tablets, computers, and even cross-generational devices such as a PlayStation 4 and a PlayStation 5. It also outlines interoperability between non-Sony products, for example, Microsoft's Xbox, as well as security measures to prevent exploits such as asset duplication. Continuing gaming news, we saw competitors Immutable and Polygon joining forces for a beautiful 
beautiful partnership to accelerate development and adoption of blockchain gaming. Immutable announced at GDC that their ZK EVM, which is an Ethereum virtual machine that game developers use to compress data to improve scaling and security on the blockchain, will be powered by Polygon. They said that this will help lower their transactional costs while remaining compatible and secure. Now, they also shared with us their opinion on blockchain gaming, saying that they estimate that 40% of games currently being developed in Web3 would launch within the next 12 to 18 months, and that this would help bring in 100 million new players. Next up, we have received confirmation that Reddit will be launching their very own digital collectible marketplace after CEO Steve Huffman confirmed this at Paris Blockchain Week. This is great news as I'm personally not a fan of the current UI they have for the avatars on Reddit's website. These NFTs sell for relatively cheap, anywhere between $10 and $100, and the resale value on some of these collection is really high. So I'm definitely going to try to get my hands on the next generation of their avatars. Next, we have Telegram announcing that users will now be able to send each other stable coins through their app, specifically TRC20 tokens. So this is Tether on Tron. Now, Telegram did previously have plans to incorporate crypto into their app back in 2018. However, they did halt this after a run-in with the SEC in 2020. Now, speaking of the SEC, it seems as though crypto is in an all-out war with the American government after the SEC is handing out subpoenas and warnings left and right. Now, we did see the SEC send a Wells notice to Coinbase stating that their staking platform did constitute unregistered securities. However, Coinbase is going to be fighting back and they are getting a ton of support from crypto Twitter for doing this, which is ironic considering the amount of times that crypto Twitter has bullied them, but they are standing up for not just themselves, but all of crypto. So I'll definitely support them in this endeavor. And it's not shocking to see that they don't bow down to the SEC. They had previously stated that they would be ready to fight after Kraken had to pay $30 million to the SEC for a similar problem with their staking platform. Now, along with this, we did see an announcement out of the SEC that American investors should proceed with caution when it comes to crypto. We also had the White House state that crypto assets don't offer any fundamental value or act as an effective alternative to fiat money. And it's funny that this announcement came just hours after Russia said that they are going to be using the Chinese Yuan instead of the US dollar to trade with Asia, Africa, and Latin America. And all this is happening as more and more people are turning to crypto, are turning to Bitcoin, as we now have five banks that have failed. So in my opinion, people are losing confidence in the system. To top it off, we have the Federal Reserve and Jerome Powell this week raising rates by 25 basis points and stating that they do not see rate cuts anytime this year. So I definitely expect more pain to come in the future. However, they're definitely fighting back against this whole crypto positive narrative, which reminds me of the classic saying, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. We are clearly in the fighting stage. Now, on the other side of things, we do have two different states fighting back against central bank digital currencies. First, we have have Ron DeSantis of Florida saying that CBDCs will not make its way into Florida. And we also saw Senator Ted Cruz from Texas release a bill that would ban the Fed from adopting a CBDC. Now, a few reasons that he states for this is one, to protect Americans' information, two, to protect Americans' privacy, and three, he states that the government should not have even more control than they already do on a citizen's money. Moving on to fundraises, here are some of the biggest raises of the week. The first one comes out of CCP Games, who just announced a $40 million raise led by A16Z to develop a brand new AAA game within the EVE universe utilizing blockchain technology. Now, if you don't know CCP. They are the creators of EVE Online, which is a massive multiplayer online sandbox game. Sandbox meaning there is no end to the game. And in my opinion, this type of game is perfect for blockchain technology. Although of course, when a massive brand or a massive game or company gets into Web3, it is always met with a ton of backlash and people get quite upset on crypto Twitter as Web3 still has a very negative stigma. The final story of the week is the platform Open raising $28 million 
dollars to build the Web3 version of WhatsApp mixed with Amazon. The platform will feature token gated aspects, which will allow artists and creators to mint NFTs for their community members and token gate exclusive experiences and content. The platform will utilize AI technology. Of course, if you want to raise funds, you have to sprinkle in artificial intelligence. The round was led by Animoca Brands and they do have a valuation of $100 million. That's it for the news this week. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you like this kind of content, would you kindly subscribe to my channel? Hit that bell notification. Thank you for watching Crypto Gorilla. Peace.